Today we're going to use my new hydraulic hose crimper to make a new hydraulic hose. I thought this would be useful for you guys to see, not because you're going to want to make your own hoses. In fact, as we go through this, I think you'll see that it makes sense for you not to make your own hoses. But I just thought it might be interesting for you to see. So as we go through this video, we will make the hose itself, one just like this one. And we'll also go through the pricing. What will all of this cost you? What all will you need to be able to make your own hoses? Is there any opportunity for a business in this? I think there might be for a few of you, but for most of you, I don't think that'll be the case. Still hoping the video will be interesting. Let's get started. Yeah, I'm sure you've already detected that my voice is not right. Yeah, I've been sick for several days, I, I, just a bad cold, and uh, this is the best voice I've had now in two weeks. Uh, I think Christy's been happy about that. She hasn't had to hear me uh, complain or gripe or anything. Well, I guess I can still figure out a way to gripe and complain, even without a voice. But I really wanted to get back and, and see you guys again, because it's been a good while. But I'm wondering if I'm hurrying it a little too much because I, I, I don't want it to be distracting for this, for this episode. But anyway, the first step in the hose making business is cutting it. Now, there are official hose cutting machines and I don't have one. I didn't get one. I didn't buy one. I didn't think that I needed one. I'm using a Harbor Freight $100 steel cutoff saw here. Pull it into the frame a little bit so maybe you can see it a little bit. It's, um, yeah, it's cheap. I don't think it's perfect. It'll be interesting uh, to hear feedback from some of you professionals as to why you need a real cutoff saw for these hoses. The one thing I noticed on my first one was that it didn't cut quite uh, straight. And I, I wonder if that's just because of some flexibility here or if maybe I pushed it too hard, I, I don't know, but we'll see if we can do a little bit better on that this time. I've got my first hose stretched out here. I want the second hose to be a little bit shorter than it. So I'm going to put it in right here. Well, why would I want it a little bit shorter if they're gonna be a pair? Well, it's an eight inch cylinder and the hoses need to be the same length when they get to the tractor. So one hose will attach a little further up on the cylinder than the other one. So that's. That's why I want one a little bit shorter than the other. That's the type of decision you can make when you're making your own hoses. And you can make that at the spur of the moment. Now there's no reason why you can't make that decision at, at time of purchase as well if you're buying them from discounthydraulichose.com. You can go in there and specify the exact length, exactly which fittings you want. Uh, we'll go over that a little more in a minute. The benefit here is you can get them after hours. You can get them on your schedule. Is that worth it for most of you? No, but stay tuned. As I mentioned, the cut isn't real clean. If I can get at the right angle there, you'll be able to see what's left. You can see the wires when you look in there. Uh, now I can trim off some of that cut right there. Unfortunately, some of the wires are there too, so I don't know, that's not, that's not perfect by far. I cut slower that time, um, thinking maybe I could do a better job, but I actually think I did a worse job by cutting slower. That's a pretty rough looking cut right there. I really don't think it matters though, in the scheme of things. Now as a part of cuts like these, uh, some of the little fragments of the cut of the rubber are gonna get down inside the pipe. So I use just an air compressor, just a simple air to, I'm, I'm gonna see if we can see it come out of here. Yeah, just one little puff came out. I'm gonna blow the other way just to see if there was any right in the other end. Didn't see any more. Again, I think there's a special tool for this, but I didn't get it. I'm just using my air nozzle here. I do have a kind of a 
tapered end here meant, meant to go into uh, small lines. So it's a pretty tight fit. Next, we have to choose which fitting we're gonna put on the end, which hose end we're gonna put on ours. Now I need pipe, my most hated thread type ever, but anyway, I need pipe with a 06 or 3 8 on one end, and I need pipe male with half inch or 08 on the other end. So that's what we will choose here, one of each. While I've been sick, I really haven't been able to do much at all, but one thing I was able to accomplish is I got my catwalk built. So no more ladder. You've seen the ladder sitting there for months and months and months. It was Chris's idea to have the ladder sitting there. And I thought, well, maybe I could make a little catwalk across there that they could use to look outside. And it's just six inches wide of little Luon, I think, or, you know, MDF actually is what it is. And quarter inch MDF, it's not very strong, but it's just screwed right into one of those garage door braces. And I thought it would be something that could hold them up really nice and, and let them look outside without me having to trip over that ladder every time. A lot of times, you probably know what it's like when you're sick, an hour or so at a time is about all I could work. So I've been identifying small projects uh, just things that I could get out and do just for a few minutes and by then I'm exhausted and back to the couch. It's key to get the fitting on as far as you can. So measuring that max distance before we ever start is a good way to do it. I've, I've seen people make a little mark with the end like this, but anyway, it's just past the R in this case is where I need to go on to. And I can turn that usually and it goes much better. And it goes right past that R, just like I would expect. So no problem on that end. On this end, it should cover the white of that sticker right there. There we go. All done, right? No, all done except for the fun part. Yep, this is the fun part. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this fitting right in here, stick it right in there and hold it, and then we'll crank this down and we'll make the crimp. But before we can do that, we have to figure out how tight to crimp it. This same crimper can crimp, I believe, all the way up to one inch hoses, and we're crimping a 3 8 Well, even some of the different ends require different amounts of crimp on them. So we get that information, again, from the website where we purchase the uh, fittings, and they tell the actual crimped diameter, the desired crimped diameter for the particular hose type we're using and for the particular fitting that we're putting on the end. Now all this is listed in millimeters, which I'm thankful for. This would be math that I would not want to try to handle in fractions. So with 3 8 hose, with the R16 hose, which is what I have, I need to have 18.79 millimeters final crimp diameter. Now, I get a bunch of dies, a bunch of different size dies with this crimper. In fact, I think they're, they came in 14, 17, you know, several different sizes above that. But what I need to do is I need to choose the die size that is the closest but smaller than the final crimp diameter. So, 18.79 millimeters. For me, I have a 17 millimeter die that I can use. Now let me show you how these dies, they're, there's eight pieces to it. They're all identical and they're kind of magnet attached and then, then they've got a little bit of a latch that they fit in there. So you just take all eight of those out and put in the different die size that you need. Now, this is, this is for the detail right here. If I have this set to zero and I crimp this all the way down, that 17 millimeter die is going to crimp to 17 millimeters. But as we just stated, we want 18.79 millimeters. So I want to add one, there's one, 0.79 millimeters to the to the size of the die. So when this crimps down, the light will come on before we get fully tight. The light will come on 1.79 millimeters before we are fully crimped. Otherwise, I have to cut the end off and start all over. Hopefully, we'll get it right. Now, both of these ends, even though this is a 
you might say a 3 8 inch or an 06 pipe thread, and the other one's a half inch or 08 pipe thread, both of them crimp the same way. So how far do you hold this in here? I've seen people crimp way back here and leave a big bubble, and I just don't like how that looks. Uh, other people, oh, I'm going to tighten this. Apparently I left it loose. Just like a floor jack or anything else you're using. You might say, this is going to be manual. This is going to be hard. How are we going to do this? I thought so too, but I will show you in just a moment. Now, it's essentially tight, and this next pump's going to be kind of hard. And then right here, you'll see it break loose. This is a two-stage pump. Okay, Once the second stage kicks in, it goes much more slowly, but it pumps easily. So I just pump until this light comes on. I don't know if you'll be able to see that light. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, the tester works. There, the light came on. Hopefully you can see it right there. That's all we have to do. Now we can let off. And there is our crimp. Final test, we do need to take micrometer and see what it says. After all, there's a lot of hydraulic pressure we're going to be seeing here, so it better be pretty close to right. I really don't know what the tolerance would be. 18.65, well, I'm not over the center. Yeah, that's perfect. It's a little difficult to get that perfect because it's easy to get on one of those humps in between crimps. But 18.7 looks right on. A couple of more points before I move on to the other end. The very first one I crimped, I crimped a little bit too much and some of the hose began to bunch right under here. So in this case, I'm not seeing any bunching, so I have not over crimped this hose. This one looks good. I'm a professional. Yeah. Okay, this one's going to be set the same way. Now they do have higher end crimpers that don't require any manual work. I think they're run uh, pneumatic, I think the next one up, at least by Uniflex here, the same company that this one's from, uses air input, air pressure to, to crank it down. I actually don't see that as any value. I would if it were single stage. This would be no fun at this one stage. But as soon as it gets tight there, then it gets easy. And then I wonder if it's even working, right? And it begins to get a little heavier even in this, oh, I've got more length too, but begins to get a little heavier even in this second stage as we get close to tight. Now I'm slowing down because I don't want to over crimp. Yeah, when I see the light, I want to be able to let off 18.9 maybe, no, 18 point, just an angle of the way I hold the thing, 18.6, 18.7, I'm going to call that good. Again, no bunching of the hose, so I'm happy with this. We'll not know for sure until this runs for a while and we'll see if it blows off on the tractor, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a good one. This hose is done. It's only got the ends on it. You'll very likely need some fittings. Now, if you're replacing a hose like we are here in this case, I matched these to the fittings that are in the cylinder itself. Uh, and in this case, the cylinder, and then the other end here is to the quick disconnect, the ISO quick disconnect coupler that's on the end that goes into the tractor. So in that case, we didn't need any new fittings. We just had to make sure we had exactly the same ends that we had before, and they both happen to be pipes, so we're good on that. This particular hose, actually, and the other one that I made before that I was using as a sample, we broke them when we were moving the hump out here. Um, I didn't have the hoses properly configured on the disc for Johnny 5 and they got into the tongue or got into the tractor somehow when we turned and we busted both of those hoses. Thankfully, we had another cylinder that I robbed off my old plow that got us through that time. I'm just now getting around to get it fixed. So in this case here, there's no reason why I couldn't have 
simply ordered a hose to match these specs from Discount Hydraulic Hose and it would have worked out fine, but that's only because I had that other cylinder. If that had been the only cylinder I had, if it had been after hours on a weekend when I couldn't get anywhere else, we would have been out of work. We couldn't have made any progress with that rig until we got a hose made. Those are the only times that making your own hoses will really help you. Let's look at some of the disadvantages. The obvious disadvantage to making your own hoses is the cost. So discount hydraulic hose uh, provided some of this stuff for me and I had to purchase some of it but I got it, even that part at a discount. So uh, it, it made it seem like that it, it was good for me to have this. We do a lot of prototyping here. Sometimes I want to put something together and I want to do it quickly, uh, maybe even while a, a partner is here in the shop and we want to try something, see if it works. Um, and it's, it's been kind of a challenge at times not to be able to make our own hoses for that type of a situation. So we're thankful for a quality partner like Discount Hydraulic Hose uh, to be able to get a discount uh, and that kind of thing, but most of you are not going to have that opportunity. So I thought I would go through some of the prices of these products. This particular hose crimper is $3,950. And that comes with those different dies. Uh, so it comes with all you need from the crimper standpoint, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. I got three different sizes of hose. I got a roll uh, of a quarter inch, another roll of three eighths inch, and a roll of half inch. Now, each of those cost roughly $1,000, and depending on the size of the hose, they went from 500 feet uh, for the quarter inch down to 320 feet for the half inch. I'm not sure how much I've gotten fittings. Um, the hose ends and various other fittings because I've ordered some of those over time. Uh, they've been sprinkled through various orders. Uh, so I, I wasn't able to total that up very well, but I'm guessing somewhere around $4,000 worth of fittings. Totaling all this up, yeah, you yeah, hang on to your seats. Oh, forgot my $500 table. Yeah, I, I went to Sam's Club and I got the $500 uh, roller cart here to put all this stuff in. I guess I felt like for as much value as, as we were dealing with here, then I needed to take good care of it. So I, I think if you do want to do something like this, go ahead and spend the money on something to, to be able to store them in. I'm a big fan of the Sam's Club uh, Ultra HD Seville Classics roll around cabinets. I've got my third now. I've had the first one, I think, four years ago, something like that, a long time. Uh, and I love them, and they're $500, and yet I think they, they do the work of a Snap-on or definitely the Harbor Freight cabinets or the Menards cabinets, and I, I, I just I don't see the reason to spend the extra money for what I use them for. Put all that together, I'm embarrassed to say it, I'm well over $11,000 retail price for all the stuff we've got in this hose making. Now that includes enough material to make a lot of hoses. So that's not all purely overhead, right? So if I'm gonna go buy these hoses, let's say I just bought the two hoses that, that I made this evening, I'm gonna pay uh, a little bit more for the hose if I buy it uh, already completed there than I paid because I bought in, in bulk. I bought the reel, right? A reel I think was somewhere around a dollar eighty something a foot, whereas just buying the hose by the foot was two eighty eight a foot. So I think an extra dollar a foot there if you're buying by a reel. Fittings are the same price. Um, I don't see a whole lot of advantage there. They do charge $10.50 to assemble the hose. Actually, you saw the, the work involved. It wasn't that difficult, but it requires the equipment. So it's probably a fair deal to pay them $10.50 to, to put it together. Overall though, if you consider just the crimper to be overhead, right? The rest of the, the fittings, the hoses, let's assume that you're 100% efficient and you use all those over time. It would probably take 300 to 400 hoses before you broke even making your own hoses. So you're not gonna make it that way, I get it. Well, who then would ever use these? I, I have two kind of purposes in mind. One is you're using it after hours. Uh, my family on the farm does not have their own hose making equipment. They've made the same financial decision that most others make. It's just not 
not in their interest. Uh, if, if they blow a hose and they don't have something they can make do with tonight, they'll have to wait till tomorrow morning. And uh, if it's after close on Saturday, well, they're, they're out of luck. So they've just made that calculation and, and have dealt with it. I think that is the situation, however, where you can make this work. If you're in a business critical situation, you've got time critical jobs, you blow a hose, you can get to home after hours, fix your hose, get back on the job, get going very, very quickly. It doesn't take much in the business world to pay for a $4,000 crimper and then to be able to afford to maintain that inventory. The other opportunity is just that. I think it's an opportunity. Let's look at my hometown community where my family farm is. And I just mentioned they don't have hose equipment. But there are neighbors that do. And there are neighbors that have bought equipment like this, have got a setup like this, and will sell them hoses after hours. Yeah, they'll get up in the middle of the night and they'll make hoses for them if they need to, right? And yeah, they might even charge a little more than what discount hydraulic hose would charge. But that is the service aspect and that's the aspect where there might be opportunity for you to develop your own small business. Perhaps you set up a little table like this, or maybe you even get it set up in a toolbox in a truck or multiple toolboxes in a truck. We've really needed no power equipment here. The only thing we've done is saw, and we could do that with a battery operated saw. Yeah, you could have your own little mobile hose business. Um, as soon as you get the word of mouth out there and people know about it, it's a, a good way to make some money. I know that my family would be more than happy to pay you a premium to get you out of bed at 1 a.m. and make them a hose at certain times. And, and yeah, that, that obviously is not going to be fun for you, but hey, it's a job and it might be an entry for a broader occupation, selling hoses, selling fittings, maybe providing other hydraulic parts or other, other parts of other sources. You just don't know. You just don't know where it might lead. There's all kinds of opportunities like that. If you can provide a service that no one else is providing or that no one else is providing as conveniently as you do, you have some sort of an edge, right? So in this case, a $10,000, $12,000 investment might get you in business and get you started to where you can, uh, you can serve your customers well. But for most of you, if you need a hydraulic hose, pay the extra $10.50, call Discount Hydraulic Hose, go to their website, you choose right there, you choose which hose you want, you choose which end you want on each end, right? And it's at your house in what, a couple of days? You can probably even do next day shipping, I don't know. But it's not very long and that's the way to handle this. Go to discounthydraulichose.com slash TTWT. You'll see some kits we've already put together there. Use code TTWT at checkout and you'll get 5% off. Say, a 10.50. They'll take the 50 cents off of that. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, I just wanted to provide something informative, a little bit different until I get my voice back. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. We work hard with our own hands. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it.